Hello, this is David D. Hilster. I'm a critical thinker, science dissident, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something your university professor won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly science evangelists won't tell you. Today I'm going to look at all this talk about um, gravity, uh, gravity wave detectors. The uh, LIGO observatory is detecting supposedly uh, gravity waves. We're going to talk about what this means and how you can read this. So you can see here um, from the LA Times, black hole collision detected by LIGO confirms another part of Einstein's theory of relativity. There's some good things in here. Confirms another part. It confirms meaning it matches with, so they're not like saying proves or anything, but it, it confirms something that is supposedly predicted by Einstein's theory. Uh, today I'm not going to really... Uh, delve into the language here because the language isn't too misleading, although you've got your, your typical words like space-time and all that. But I'm going to talk about what this really means, how you can translate it, because that's the part that doesn't go well. So we can see that it's detecting black holes, collisions, cataclysmic collision uh, between two black holes that lie three billion light years away. Quite, quite a, a long distance, but looking at this, they can see that this was a, from a paper in Physical Review Letters. This is a very mainstream science re uh, uh, place. You cannot write a paper uh, refuting general relativity or special relativity or relativity at all and ever get into those uh, publications. Uh, they protect uh, bad science, the way I look at it. And of course, it says cements the idea this, of course, cements the idea that gravi gravitational wave astronomy, a whole new way to observe some of the most powerful events in the universe, is here to stay. <laughs> I like that, folks. This is, these, these are the way they prepare you. This is sort of like, pol it is politics. The politics is to prepare you for now. Much more money spending on these kinds of things. PhDs can be made for nerdy people like myself, so we can build these things and play with the machines and give ourselves prizes and all that stuff, even though we have no idea when, it, when it, any of this stuff is. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. And of course, we're really moving from novelty to a new observational science. You see, it goes from novelty to science. This is this means they are preparing us now for their next endeavor on unicorn science. I call it unicorn science because unicorns don't exist, but of course, you can talk about them all day long. The breeding habits, the colors of unicorns, uh, what they eat, and where they're found. Uh, you can have a whole science around it, just like Harry Potter. But it, it does not mean it is real. So um, they, they say the ripple was triggered by two black holes spinning around slowly, uh, slowly toward uh, one another, finally succumbing to each other gra gravitational tug and merged. That's what's happening here. And here we come to the part where I am going to start um, tearing this apart a bit. Gravitational waves are ripples in the fabric of space-time. Okay, this is wonderful because we're looking at this again, space-time. We're looking at ripples in the fabric of space-time. Now, you, I want you to think about this. First, you have space-time. We've already talked about this. Space is, by definition, in human language, meant to mean nothing. Stuff is in space, but space itself is nothing. Time is our way to try to measure movement. Time is used for movement. We're here, we're there. Time is our way. Clocks are measuring movement of time. Time is not a thing, it's movement. So it's both our concepts. Space is nothing. There's nothing physical about it. Time is a concept. It's something we try to measure. Again, man puts them together and we supposedly make a fabric. No! No, we have to stop talking about this. We actually have other people developing other models of the universe that these there are things that are real. Gravity is real. Light is real. Electromagnetic fields are real. My father and I are working on one of them. There are other people working on things. This isn't real. So we keep talking about these things. So the fabric of space-time. Space-time. The fabric of space. It, again, that's the problem. The problem is there's no physicality to anything that they're talking about. 
So they're saying ripples in that. We have no what idea what the physicality of that is. It's just blah, blah, blah. Caused by objects accelerating and decelerating through space. Um, of course, their existence was predicted over a century ago on, by Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. And we know that that's pretty problematic. Hey, Einstein, I've got you today. You're looking pretty... Um, it's good that he has the goggles on because he's going to have to deflect all the problems. If he were alive, I really think he would uh, uh, let go of a lot of his ideas because I hope he was a person looking for truth, not trying to be a god, which he is now. He's an icon, pop figure, makes lots of money. Israel, the university, makes 10 to $15 million a year off of his image. It's money. Einstein's money, folks. So LIGO changed all that. We were able to, we're, it was virtually undetectable, but now it is. Now it's become from novelty to real science. And um, here's, again, the problem is the detector itself we don't talk about. Uh, we're talking about how that we're detecting them like now we've got this uh, black hole detector, whatever. And we're going to be able to use it for other things. Problem is you have a physical thing that's a detector. It's detecting something. But they don't know what it's detecting. There's a, a man who I heard, a professor at the University of Connecticut in photonics. He was, he specialized, he's over 35 years, I believe, in the area of studying light. He ha This is what he says about light. We don't know how it's emitted. We don't know when it's emitted. How it, how it gets emitted, how it travels through space, it hits our detectors, and it, and it uh, uh, makes the we make the detection. We have no idea what that, that is. So basically, from start to finish, we have no idea what light is. We have no idea what gravity is. We say it's the bending of space-time, but we don't know what that is. So no matter what you do in, in mainstream physics, we don't have a physicality for this. We will talk about that in the future. My father is going, and I are going to be starting a new YouTube channel about this, about a model that actually talks about all that. But regardless, if you're reading these articles, understand that when they talk about space-time and all this, they don't know what it is. They don't know what they're really detecting. It doesn't mean that very important point. The biggest point I want to make today, other than it's not physical, number one, is number two, they are detecting something. Something is happening but we have no idea really what that is. So as much as we can say that it's uh, ripples of, of space-time, we don't know what space-time is. We don't know how space-time is detected. We say we do, but we don't have a physicality even for what gravity is. So let's, we, we have to pull back. We, we have a model that we could apply to whatever they say is their detector and give, give us an idea what they're really doing. But until someone does that, like ourselves or someone else, mainstream is lost. Sorry, there's, not, there's no physicality. Okay. Anyways, that's enough in the, for today. And, and I want you to always remember, don't take what anyone says on faith. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm Dave DeHilser, your science therapist. Ciao for now.